My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N R. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn algebra. Today is our day number two. The problems are already on the blackboard. I'm going to read the problems to you very quickly in the event that you have trouble reading my handwriting. It says if A equals 2, B equals 3, C equals 5, P equals 0, and Q equals 10. What are the values of the following expressions? b squared plus c squared, a minus b, c times q, a squared plus b squared, a times b, a times b times p, c squared plus p squared, c, b times c, p times q, and a, a times b times c minus c, 3 times q. What I want you to do is pause the video at this point, solve the problems yourself. Once you have done doing the problems yourself, you can continue, you can resume the video and watch, okay? So pause and unpause and do the work yourself. Alright, here we go then. Number one. A is B squared plus C squared. B we know is 3, so it's basically 3 squared plus C squared. 3 squared is 3 squared plus C squared, which is C is 5. So it is 3 squared which is 9 plus 25, we know that 10 plus 25 is 35, so 9 plus 25 must be 34. Do not use the bloody calculator, leave it alone. As I said before in the first day, leave the calculator alone. I want you to use your brain. Do not be lazy. It does not save time. It is faster and you will get more out of it if you use calculator, if you, use, if you do it yourself, if you use your brain as opposed to depending on the machine. Number two. A squared which is 2 squared. A is 2 plus B squared which is 3. 2 squared is 4. 2 times 2 is 4 and 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 4. We know 10 times 4 is 14 so 9 times 4 must be 13. Follow. Number three. A C squared plus P squared. Let's put a demarcation. If you do not know what demarcate means, oh geez, I left it in the other room, didn't I? Give me five seconds, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. As you watch this video on a regular basis, you will see that I have this habit of making sure that you understand any kind of word that I use which may qualify as quote unquote vocabulary word for the SAT, GRE or GMAT. If you're watching these videos and down the road, if you're planning, if your academic uh, future uh, entails having to take uh, SAT or GRE or GMAT, in addition to having good mathematical skill, you must also have a good command of the English language. And the most important, I don't know why I have these urges to break into pep talk always, but that's what I do. And the most important ingredient of having a good command of the English language is having good vocabulary. It does not hurt to expand your vocabulary at the same time while you're learning, learning math. And this is good actually because you see the words being used in the context. These are not just words falling where you see some YouTubes where they give you one word after the other out of the blue and they give you the meaning and they move on to the next one. Here I use the word, uh, this, this is, nothing is premeditated here. They just come out of nowhere. Here, there's a good word, premeditated. We'll talk about that in a second. If you want to learn demarcate, and I'll use it again in the context in a second so that you know how I used it. Let's see if I can find it. I know I covered it. Demarcation. I covered it because I use this word all the time. I'm looking at my list here. Diminuti, Oh, there we go. Day number 12. The word is demarcate. What does it mean to demarcate? It means to put a boundary, to put a border. I just, I said, the way it was, I said, it was like this. I said, let me put a demarcation so that we can keep them separate. Demarcation is the noun of demarcate, which is the word. Premeditate, what does it mean to premeditate? Of course, you know what premeditate means. What does it mean to meditate? The word meditate has two meanings. One meaning of the word meditate is what most people know, which is some sort of a therapy where you sit there and you go, you meditate. But what, is the word, what does the word literally mean? 
literally meditate means to think and pre-meditate pre -meditate means to think ahead of something my, my lectures here these words they come out of nowhere these are not pre-meditated they just come, come, pop out of nowhere in the sentence and if I feel that it's a good word to know for the SAT or the GRE or the GMAT I pause and make sure that you understand them here are some good words there are some other words that I used uh, just uh, two days ago uh, volition which we learned on day number 37 just type in Keshwani prayer dash vocab dash vocab dash d37 or you don't need a hyphen d37 and you will learn the word pollution which means to do of your to do something of your own free will pollution anyway enough of that c squared is 25 c squared is 5 5 squared plus p oh p is 0 so 0 squared is 0 it's just 25 let's move on to number 4 So again the tag that you would want to use is Keshwani prep dash vocab dash day whatever day that you want. There are some other words that I use, tyro, neophyte and novice. They all mean to be a beginner, to be some to be inexperienced or something, to be callow. Oh there's a good word, callow. C-A-L-L-O-W callow. What did we cover this word? And if I did, the most logical place to cover it would be at the same day, day number 44. But then again, you can't go by logical because the idols sometimes don't do logical. Oh, it is 44. So they were all covered on the same day, day number 44. They were all covered on the same day because they all mean the same thing. Callo, Tyro, Neophyte and Navas. It's a beginner, somebody who is uh, green, somebody who is rough around the edges. The expression is rough around the edges. If someone is described as being rough around the edges, what you're telling, uh, what is, what you're telling me is that uh, he is not quite polished yet, he's not quite refined yet, as in he's not quite experienced in it. He's, he's beginning, he's starting. Where did this, this come from? I don't remember how it came about. And I also don't remember what number we were on. Let's do number four. I don't know where we were. Number four, A times B, A times B, A is two, B is three, so it's six. Number five, B times C, B is three, C is five, so it's fifteen. As I explained before in the previous videos, in, the, in day number one, and I'm going to explain it one more time, so just so you understand the language, I'm going to explain one more time because it's an important concept. We are up to number five. B times C, you see? This is B times C. Whatever the quantity B is, B has a value, and whatever the quantity C is, C has a value. In this case, the B happens to be 3, C happens to be 5. But this is B times C. It is rather as B times C or B multiplied by C, whatever you want to say. It. But just like any other language, there are sometimes several different ways of saying the same thing. You may say this. You may say something in three different ways and they all mean the same thing, just like that, same simile, same idea. In, in the language of algebra, there are many different ways I can say the same thing. B times C, I can write it like this, or I can write it like this, which is what most people are used to seeing, or I can simply write BC without anything between, no darts, no multiplication sign, or we can write it like this, B and then put C in the parenthesis, or we can put the B in the parenthesis and put C outside, or we can put B and C both in the parentheses. One, two, three, four, five, six are a half a dozen way of saying the same damn thing, B times C. So don't freak out. They do not have different meanings. They all mean the same thing. And this parenthesis has no, no particular importance. We put parentheses so that I can see from far away. If you put parentheses like this, people have a habit of putting the parentheses around it on the second number, so that like I can see from far away that you're trying to tell me that it is two times three, as opposed to as opposed to writing like this, which has a danger of being misinterpreted as two point three, or as opposed to writing like this, I might not see that uh, x in the uh, multiplication sign, or my, I might interpret that multiplication sign as some variable x. So to avoid all that confusion and to make it easier on the eyes to notice it from far away, people usually say, if you want to say 2 times 3, they say 2 times 3. They put the parenthesis around the second one. 
If you wanted to, you could put parentheses around both of them. Oh, we didn't do that. The, oh, there you go. We missed one. You could put parentheses around both of them, but it won't serve any purpose. That's all. This is the most common. This is the most common way. But all of these seven ways are acceptable ways of expressing the idea that the quantity B is being multiplied by quantity C. Do you understand? Do not tell me that I forgot again what number we were at. Number six. We got to make progress here. Number six. C times Q. C is five. Q is ten. See, sometimes I put multiplication signs, sometimes I put parentheses. It depends on the mood. So that's 50. Let's do number seven. Number seven is A times B times P. Let's put number seven here, and I'll, you'll see why in a second. Number seven is A times B times P. Right away I notice that I have a P which we know is zero. This is zero. So it doesn't matter, I'm not going to waste our, uh, 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 we're not going to waste our time trying to figure out what A times B is because it's futile, it's a moot point what A, A times B is. What A times B is a moot point, it doesn't matter. It is a, if you do that, it's only, it will be only for, for theoretical purposes, for just for the practice, for the purpose of doing it, just for the practice of fulfilling the formality, but it won't serve any purpose because any number times zero is zero. P is zero, so it doesn't matter what this is, any number times zero is, well this is this, in algebra this is this, in, in the language of algebra equal means, equal sign is read as is, in algebra you say equal sign, in English we would say is, they're the same thing, this is algebra language, this is English language, is, are, were, will be, they all express with the equal sign, will be. Any number times zero equals zero. If you have a whole bunch of number and one of them happens and you're multiplying all of them, two times three times seven times 17 times 19 times zero, well times as soon as I hear times zero, then it's just a big fat zero. There is no point on sitting there and wasting your time trying to figure out what is two times three times four times 17 times 14, if you know that at the very end you're going to have a big fat zero, times zero, well times zero then the whole thing is zero. Number, number eight. Any number times zero is zero. Number eight. A times B times C times P. I put the two extra, two dots in there. A times B times C times C, oh well there you go another P. It's a big fat zero because P is zero. Any number, this is this is this being any number, you see? We could sit there and waste our time trying to figure out A, which is two, times B, which is three, times C, which is five, two times three is six, six times five is thirty, and then thirty times zero would be a big fat zero. So figuring out all three is a mood point. It serves no purpose. It is done only for theoretical purposes to fulfill the formality. It doesn't serve any purpose. It doesn't get you anywhere. It's a moot point. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, let's see, when did we learn? I keep using this word. Day number seven, if you're interested. Again, type in Kashwani Prep dash vocab dash day seven. And whenever I say, look, uh, watch this thing and uh, learn it. And whenever I finish by sentence by saying, if you're interested, the, the, the translation of that, uh, that would be, you're interested. Learn it. Number nine, day number nine. Oh, sorry, problem number nine. The penultimate problem. Oh boy. Oh boy, they come out of nowhere. Day number nine. P times Q. P is, oh again P is zero, so zero, zero times Q, it doesn't matter what Q is, it's just a big fat zero. I just said, I just described number nine as the penultimate problem. Look it up and learn it. Penultimate problem. Penultimate is just a very fancy way of saying second to the last. Second to the last. I'm not going to keep breaking into the sermon each time to convince you 
I'm not going to keep breaking into sermons each time to convince you the importance of having a decent vocabulary. It is up to you. If you want to come across as an educated person, then stop employing vocabulary of a fifth grader. If you're going to come across as a college graduate, applying for a job, sitting there talking with somebody during an interview, and you keep using words from third and fourth grade vocabulary, that's not going to get you anywhere. You must convey in your speech, I know it's a big sermon, I have this uncontrollable urge right now to break into big sermon. Rightly or wrongly, that is the mood point. Rightly or wrongly, people assess the intelligence of other person by listening to the kind of words they employ in their speech. Whether it's the right thing to do, whether it's the wrong thing to do, it doesn't matter. It's not going to change the world. That's just the way the world is. As soon as you open your mouth, people begin to make assessment about your intelligence, about your education, about your background, about everything about you. Do you understand? It is very important that you improve your vocabulary. It is very important that you have a decent command of the language, of the language. Notice I did not say English language because it's true for everywhere. If I lived in France, I better speak proper French. If I lived in Germany, I better speak proper German. Wherever you are, you have to speak proper language in order to command any sort of premium in the labor market. Do you understand? Enough of that. Number, number 10. Number 10, the last one. A, B, C. A, B, C. A, B, C minus 3 times Q. A is 2. B is 3. C is 5 minus 3 times Q, which is 10. Let's see what that boils down to. Let's see what it boils down to. 2 times 3 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 minus 30. Something has gone drastically wrong here. Because in my notes here, I show that as 0. And here it comes out to be negative 5. Negative, negative 5. 3 times Q. 3 times Q is in fact 30. A times B times C. A times B which is 6. Ah. 6 times 5. Oh, 6 times 5 is 30. Bloody hell. 6 times 5 is 30. It is 0. For a second I came up with negative 5. I don't know why. Because I was looking at this quantity. Oh, because I was looking at this. This is, this is 2 times 3. You see how easy it is to make mistake? It is 2 times 3. I said 2 times 3, but in my mind I registered that as 2 plus 3. And I was looking at that as 2 plus 3 being 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 minus 30, and I was coming up with negative 5 for the answer. But in my notes I have a 0. Anyway, it is 0, because 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. So this quantity is 30 minus 30 is 0. I will see you tomorrow on day number 3. Alright? If you wish to get hold of me, just go to any of these website addresses that you see there, and send me an email. Or you can go to keshwaniprep.com and send me an email from there. Alright? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.